move on to the other part of our staff meeting. Director of Operations for Community Services, Guy Boucher, and Recreation Director, Trish McDonald, Senior and Community Service Director, Susan Morancic, for the Center for Active Living update. Well, <coughs> well let me have all the fun. Come on down and wave to both people watching us. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm Guy Boucher, Director of Operations for Community Services. Um, I didn't bring cake, so sorry, <laughs> next time. Uh, Gives me great honor and privilege to be here tonight to talk about this subject, about the Center for Active Living. Um, and uh, really proud of, of, of what we have there. Um, and I hope you as the leaders of this town, that, that and Bud and Heather and, and, and Susan, who worked very diligently to bring this forth and to have it open, uh, are proud of what we've accomplished and what we're providing for our town um, with that facility. Uh, I know uh, Susan and her crew and and Trisha McDonald and the recreation crew have been working hard to program that out and and uh, make it as useful uh, as possible for our community. Um, I did include a memo in the in the in the minutes, uh, in the information you received tonight, but I, I, so I won't read that verbatim. Um, but I I think you know the center of active living, the, the dream of it was, and I and I believe uh, Susan will talk more specifics uh, in a little bit here. Um, was to be a hybrid facility, uh, to be home of our senior uh, and, and community services um, and, and the hub of those activities, but also to service uh, our entire population from, you know, from our youngest uh, citizens to our oldest. And, and, uh, and now with my office in that building, um, and Susan and, and will echo, I'm sure, uh, that is happening. Um, on a daily basis. Um, uh, so I think the best place to kick off is, is I'll probably let Susan talk to you about her operations, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about you know some of the stuff that Recreation's been doing. Uh, Trisha couldn't be with us tonight. She's actually at a conference learning how to do more awesome stuff for our town. Um, uh, and then I'll kind of wrap it up uh, with some overall things. But. Um, I also want to echo Guy's statements. I had thought about, well, and I will make a joke of, I was about 27 when we started this. I've aged in dog years <laughs> this building, so. <laughs> but the town, I mean, we can talk a lot of numbers and specifics about programs, but I think what all of you should know and what the town should know is, and it's the intangible, but we, see it every day is the absolute joy that that building brings so everyone and this is all of you and the town did a very good thing for this town and i am also a resident so i have aged into it that's the good news um, from a numbers perspective i want to share i know you have seen some of it in the memo but we have just comparing to from march 13th of 23 when we opened till today the same time period from 2022 to 2023, we've increased check-ins in the building, which simply means someone coming in for a program. And this is just people over the age of 60. We also do, and I'll touch on it, um, benefit some of the social services, human services aspects for the town. So some of those are under 60, but primarily over 60. Over 20,000 check-ins in that almost 10-month period. The same period, a year before that, when we were still located in the old building, still a solid number, 9,600 check-ins, and the number of people grew from 2,700 individual people. So that's not counting, you know, they came for the same class twice, it is an individual coming into the building, and we've grown that to over 4,000 people in the building in the last 10 months. That does not count all of the rec programs that Tricia and her crew have built into, and I know you're gonna talk a little bit about it, but built into the gym, really just since Labor Day weekend, since the school session started. Um, all of those things, and you have a list in the memo in your packet of things that are non-COA related. With hardly even trying, we have encompassed all ages. It is a pleasure to watch grandparents bring their grandchildren to, even in strollers, to walk on the track, 
We have caregivers who bring their people to the track with wheelchairs, rollators. We had an 11-year-old, good luck, um, half marathoner who was training over the vacation week and during the nasty weather wanted to do a little running inside. So that happened on the track. We've had, and it happens to be, all of my son's college friends are home and they're all down there. You know, we've known them as so many of you, you were saying, Patrick, you know, watching kids grow up from a very young age. Well, now they're six foot four and deep voice and they're all down there playing basketball, um, dropping in while they're home on winter break. So we get to witness all of those things. But the sheer numbers, I think that we have achieved what we said the, we, Guy and Tricia, um, my assistant director, Kim Lanigan, Heather was a part of this, crafted a mission statement, what, two years ago, a yeah. year and a half ago, about building, providing the community with a vibrant environment for learning, wellness, creativity, and social connection through programs and all of those things. Um, I do want to have two seconds to thank not only our over 100 volunteers, over 100 volunteers who have put hours and hours and now it's time for my report to the state grant, so I actually have to count all those hours, mm -hmm. um, in getting us moved into the building. And particularly, I want to thank our front desk volunteers because the scope of the change for them, sitting at the desk in the old human services building and now taking on everything that's happening in the new building, they've been amazing, absolutely amazing. So they should have a cake. Next time I'll bring a cake. Mm -hmm. um, but also my staff, really until um, mid to late September, we had three of us as a staff and we did all that. And now we have additional staff, so we thank everybody for that and it's running extremely smoothly. So I could talk for about an hour and a half, but I'll let Guy move on to rec. And then if there's questions, specific things you want to know, um, we'll certainly be here for questions. Yeah, so recreation, uh, really, uh, this summer, uh, we had our first private rental group where we uh, rented the gymnasium to Sandwich Youth Basketball for their summer leagues. Uh, and they ran basically from June till August um, in there three nights a week with you know, running clinics and, and games and having referees and, and doing all that, uh, which was uh, wildly successful um, and, and, a, and a great collaboration, especially being our first kind of foray into, into renting the facility. Uh, uh, so that went really well. Um, Rec kind of kicked off. Um, we, you know, we did some indoor pickleball, we did some walking, but really um, uh, Trisha started in earnest this fall um, with some adult men's you know, ad adult basketball leagues, futsal, pickleball, um, and open gyms. Uh, uh, to date, since the fall, you know, we've, with our programs, with Rex programs, they service over 800 people um, alone. So, uh, which is which is pretty amazing. And and to kind of jump off of what what Susan said, you know, that doesn't count the individuals uh, that are serviced that just walk in uh, during the day. So. Uh, what we've found and, um, is that uh, individuals of all ages um, uh, are coming in during the business hours, and, and if the gym's open, if there's not a program there, they're coming in to shoot hoops or kick a soccer ball around with their, with their families and things like that. So really, anybody 18 or older can come into that facility, and if there's not a program in the gym, they can walk, they can, they can utilize the gymnasium. Uh, anybody 18 and younger, we just ask them to be accompanied by an adult, which is what we found uh, working very well. Vacation week was hopping. I mean, families, uh, college kids, high school kids uh, were, were, were packed in that gym. And, and Shane and, uh, and Heather were, were very nice to give a half day that day before uh, Christmas. Uh, but Susan and her crew were there because the building was packed. Um, I, again, mentioning my office is, is at that location, and I'm kind of off the um, little uh, uh, sitting room there, a little library with a fireplace. And, you know, we have people in there almost every day uh, just reading a book, sitting, knitting by the fire, uh, having conversations, um, uh, people coming in and working, which was more part of that hybrid piece that we wanted. You know, I've met with several people that are, that are in there and just, you know, they didn't want to go in the office. So... Geez, I'm going to go down to the Center of Active Living and break up my laptop and just bang out some, bang out some work. Um, uh, and, and just seeing individuals really come in and thrive. And, and, and you know, one little story I'll, I'll, 
I guess I'll share without any names, but you know, uh, a gentleman lost his, his wife and, and, and I've known him for years in the, in the community and, and uh, you know, he, he, was having, he was struggling a little bit and you could see him kind of growing his hair out and his beard was getting a little longer and, and he started coming to the Center of Active Living. And, and then one day I was in there and he was getting a haircut because they have free haircuts there if you don't know. Um, and he got a shave. And he's like, I'm turning it around because he was going, he started going to the bereavement group that they have there. And then he started playing bocce and cornhole and, and taking advantage of all the things that are, that are offered at that facility. And, you know, now he's there almost every day, whether he's reading a book or being involved and being out in the community and not sitting in his home. Um, uh, so I think we see that uh, day in and day out. We see more and more people coming in. Uh, those numbers are a testament to that, that are new uh, faces um, to Susan's crew, uh, to the recreation crew. Um, so just really proud of that. Uh, we've also seen um, a number of events that we've held, uh, whether it be for the EPA, talking about the gun range, where we did, um, they had a, a, over 100 people in the multi-purpose room, plus the Zoom uh, capability so we had people you know zooming in for a live meeting um, you know you know so we had that event we've had a, 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 a birthday party for little Z um, if you remember that uh, which was a, a private event um, and then in the gymnasium we're also you know renting out to a soccer group every every Monday night um, and then on the week on the weekends now as well um, and then we also that's also going to be home to our Special Olympics uh, basketball program uh, coming here um, so yeah we could talk for hours I, I think you can I hope you can hear the excitement and uh, how proud we are of, of what what's what's there and um, you know both uh, Susan's crew and, and Trisha's crew are working hard um, to just keep developing that um, and I'll let Susan talk about something coming up here with fitness um, which is kind of a neat, exciting thing. Um, we are very fortunate. I never like to um, the cart before the horse, but next week we should be, um, we have been given a donation from a very generous town resident that will fund the equipment for the fitness room in the building. Wow. So happy tears and sad tears because now everything else that we have scheduled in there, <laughs> we have to find a home for. But those are great problems yeah. to have. So we'll have more on that very soon, but just wanted to leave that exciting little, because I know there's lots of folks out there that have asked about that, so. Wow. It'll be a nice addition, and so Susan and I are working hard to come up with, you know, policies on that and everything like, that go along with that. But uh, it's really been a, a pleasure to be over there, to see the activity day in and day out, um, and, 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 and to work with that, so very happy. Uh -huh. Just for the public's, I know you guys are aware of this. If you haven't got, if you, I guess it can be any age, but to get your newsletter and peruse that newsletter and you'll see what is actually going on or available in that building, it's just phenomenal. Uh, and my question was going to be, has it caught on yet where people are coming to you to want to do programs? Or do you recruit the programs? Um, that's a great question is yes it has definitely caught on and I don't think I mentioned it but we do from when we opened in March we've had over 800 n brand new to us never participated in anything people and those are the one you know those are also with those check-ins you know there are certainly still people who walk in and we don't catch them so they're not counted so those numbers are always a little less but it's a little bit of both um, we maintain social media, so which is me, I, the Facebook page and Instagram. And so any kind of promotion, the, our page on the town website, all of the, so there's a little bit of recruitment. I mean, we have to put the word out as we've been able to expand programs. And we work hard to offer a range of programming. Some of it is wellness and technically, you know, blood pressure clinics, things like that. And I didn't even mention our contract with the VNA for the town public health services has expanded what we can offer in partnership tremendously. So some of the things are like that. Other things are um, surprisingly, um, 
I'm always surprised sometimes at programs that are extremely well attended. So we did a presentation in December on just discussion on Israel and Gaza and what the history there is, and we had over 50 people at that presentation. Um, they were so thrilled. He's an MIT professor. He's coming back to do an artificial intelligence presentation later this month. Those kinds of things. So it's a little bit of both. And I think Rick is seeing that as well. And you know, we've had classes over there, such as like fencing and and and, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, adult dodgeball and you know all those kind of things. And then we've also had um, a farm. This summer we had a farm to table, uh, learn to cook class with with some of our youth, and they actually uh, uh, they made some amazing things. And and work in that kitchen was was fantastic. Uh, and then coming up, we're going to be doing an inter intergenerational. Uh, um, learned a, or a cooking class where um, working with some seniors and, and some of our younger uh, recreation uh, kids and, and they're going to be sharing recipes and teaching each other the recipes and, and doing that. Um, so lots of new stuff. I was impressed to see that because that kitchen is unbelievable. That's a great source and I was going to ask that question. Have you, ever had, have you had people looking to use it other than like a birthday party or something like that? Anything bigger? Yeah. So uh, Yes, um, I think you know, with, with the health, you know, health regulations and things like that, you know, you have to be, you have to have certain licenses and, and, and serve safe and, and all that. So we're we're navigating all of that, but um, but certainly it's being used uh, for, for for many different things. So uh, from from you know the the weekly meals and preps and stuff like that. So definitely been utilized. That's no, great. I mean, it's just any concerns. I <laughs> just out of interest, you guys have been going for almost a year now. Well, I was going to comment that every day is an adventure and a surprise, depending. On <laughs> so you know, we continue to work with our contractors and our facilities department because we're still in that contract phase. So I am now a project manager and a GC. <laughs> so up for hire. I'm cheap, <laughs> but concerns I. There's only more good things to come. I think the only concern would be that we don't have enough room. We need no. to expand. And <laughs> no. it's, a great, it's a great problem. It really is. I, and we have so many creative ideas that we have collectively talked about with Guy, with REC and the COA, so lots of good things to come. Yeah, and I, and I just think, uh, yeah, to echo off that, you know, Tricia and, and Susan, and we're work, working hard to expand our programming, expand our hours. You know, Susan, it sounds like a little thing, but, you know, she just adjusted some of her, uh, one of her staff members to, so that the building can open at 8 instead of 8.30 to get somebody in there, you know, if they want to come in and, and use the walking track a little bit earlier, then, then now they can. And, um, you know, we're still working with, with management to find resources to, you know, open, you know, evenings or, at, or weekends and things like that. But right now, people are getting in there through programming uh, at various times. Uh, the gym Monday through Friday is, is, is being utilized every night um, and, and now on the weekends as well. So, uh, yeah, we're just excited to keep adding and, and, and growing within the space. I do want to add one thing from a town perspective is 2024 will be the first full year. All of the, um, I forget which precinct it is, um, will be voting at the Center for Active Living. So again, just so many, um, all the things that we visioned, the intuitive uses for this building are flowing very smoothly. So there was voting there last, do you remember when that was? Spring? Sure. And it went great. So heading into a very busy presidential election year, it's going to be great. Right. And I think when you look at the overall property, and not to get too much in the weeds, but it goes without saying, you know, with the phenomenal skate park, the pickleball and tennis courts, you know, the big field with the, you know, the bazaar and the flea markets, and then, and then the disc golf course that, that, you know, with CPA funds was able to build with, with the Cape Cod Disc Golf to the recreation, you know, outdoor courts and the facilities there and all that goes on down at Oak Crest Cove. Uh, it, it really is a hub of recreation. And then you could go across the street to the Cape Cod BMX and, and uh, all that's going on with those guys. Um, it's, it's impressive. Um, we're adding, you know, a bathhouse at the skate park, uh, you know, hopefully coming soon, maybe hopefully for this summer, you know, which will just enhance that area as well. Um, so it's just, it's just 
it's really awesome. It's really awesome to see how much that has grown, how much it services our, the public. Even today, people were out playing pickleball and tennis and, and skateboarding and, and, and doing all that. So uh, just, just a phenomenal area for our community. If I could just add one thing, I think it's, if you look back on like how we acquired that property and you know the amount of time that it took and the sort of the foresight of the public and the board at the time, because um, you know when we bought those, I think it's 83 acres from uh, Agilent, which was the successor to Hewlett Packard. Um, you know, we had originally approached them, a couple of us, to see if they would donate a few acres at the corner for a public sa safety facility. And uh, unfortunately, they said no at the time, but they remembered we were interested when they actually wanted to get rid of the whole property. And the select board at the time had the foresight to ask the voters to fund that through debt exclusion, not through Cape Cod Land Bank funds or Community Preservation Act funds, because we wanted to use that property. And I don't think any of us in our wildest dreams could have imagined that whole area being used as it's being used now but also all the other cool parts that are still natural and woods and you know the fun fun program that's done up on the hill uh, with the kids in the summer and it abuts a whole bunch of conservation properties and walking trails I mean I don't think any of us thought it could be what it is today and it, it keeps getting better so we want to thank everybody and I, I think I would speak for this board and the, and the one before it <clears throat> We pushed to have that as a community b building. And I know I pushed Heather a lot of times about, let's use it as much as we can. And you guys have done that. My God, it's really come off. Uh, I don't think it could be any better, to be honest with you. you know. So congratulations. And just a reminder that <clears throat> you guys are in the, still the first year that you're still adding programs. Because I know I get phone calls, we've discussed, you know, like the weekend to open the gym up and stuff like that. And I know that, you know, all those things are coming. It's just that we're still, you know, in the figuring out phase. But those things are coming. This is, and it's really a, a great facility because um, the last, I, you know, I would say two or three weeks, I mean, I've been in there almost every other night with the basketball, um, you know, with the school. And, you know, some of the other parents that were sitting next to us from NOS and some of the other bigger schools, they were, you know, they're like, wow, this is really a, you know, this is a nice facility. This is really brand new. This is great. You know, nice court. So, um, yeah, it's just a, it, it, it's good to hear that they have no idea, you know, who I am or sitting there. But, it, you know, it's good to hear that, you know, that it, it's nice. You know, it's good. Thank you. I just want to make yeah. a quick comment about the tremendous synergy that's obvious between mm -hmm. the Recreation Department, uh, the um, Susan's staff, and the Senior and Community Service Department. And with the coordination with Guy, you really can see the additional pr effort, programming, staffing really resonating in the community. And something that's just amazing to see is Susan's staff fully staffed for the first time, I think, since I've been here. And it makes a tremendous difference on the way that facility operates. And um, I'm in there at least maybe every other week, if not more. And every time I'm in there, there are all people of all ages doing all sorts of interesting things. So thank you, all of you. That's great. Does anybody else have any other questions? Thank you both for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.